everybody, welcome to another lesson in Science 24 here. Today this lesson is about airbags and this is for Unit 4, Topic 3. And we're going to carry on with safety features talking about vehicles. So we've previously talked about talking about vehicles themselves and additions that they have to the vehicle like crumple zones and stuff like that. We had a lesson on seat belts. Today we're going to talk about airbags. Now airbags are rolled up inside the steering wheel, passenger side dashboard, and vehicle side panels. So hopefully you've never experienced the use of an airbag before because that means you have been in an accident. But there's going to be more and more areas that they have airbags to reduce the momentum that the vehicle and the pressure that you have going into hard components of the vehicle. Now when inflated, airbags fill with air to cushion the occupants and slow their velocity and momentum. When in a collision, a chemical reaction inside the airbag causes it to inflate in 30 milliseconds. So it's really, really quick. Now there's just like seat belts, we talked about first generation seat belts, which are a lot belt, second generation, which is the three point harness. We have different generations of airbags. Now the first generation airbags, these were designed with the adult males in mind. So really is the predominant driving uh, demographic. Now they inflated too much and too fast, which caused injuries to people that were smaller. And some people who did not wear seat did not wear seat belts because they thought they did not have to and they had the airbag on. And I mean, if that was the case, most of the time they would just go flying around in the vehicle and seriously hurt themselves or others or go flying out the windshield because they're not the seat the airbags are not holding you in place like a seat belt does. And some people even died from colliding with the hard first generation airbags because they went off so quickly and they were so compact that if they hit people in the wrong place when they were going into an accident, sometimes they were killed. Now they, we, the second generation airbags have been developed and this is what a lot of our vehicles have today. And these deploy at safer speeds and a safer force and work with the seatbelt to protect the, the vehicle occupants. And so they are tailored in different positions to conform more to your body and take different um, occupants into consideration. Now we are also going into third generation airbags and this is where they have seat sensors that detect the mass of the occupant and adjust the force of the airbag accordingly. And they also have, there's also switches in a lot of newer vehicles now where you can turn off the front passenger airbag in case you have a small child or something in the front seat where the airbag is not designed for that type of person. So seat belts and airbags, why use them now? It looks like a lot of notes here, but we'll go over it. It's pretty important stuff. So we know that moving objects have momentum. And this is Newton's first law of motion. This says that unless an outside force acts on an object, the object will continue to move at its present speed and direction. So this is just like we talked about in the seatbelt notes. You're driving at 100 kilometers an hour and you don't have a seatbelt on and your vehicle is instantly stopped in an accident for some reason. You will carry on inside that vehicle going at 100 kilometers an hour. Now, automobiles consist of several objects, including the vehicle itself, the passengers inside, and any other loose objects inside the vehicle. Now, unless the objects inside the car are restrained, they will continue, be, they will continue moving at what, whatever speed the car is traveling, even after the car is stopped by a crash. And this is why you can't brace yourself for a crash as a means of protection because you have so much force that you're carrying with the speed of that vehicle that you're traveling in. You just can't brace for that and you will carry on with that momentum. And I mean, another thing to consider with this, which a lot of people don't when they have traveling pets or suitcases, are they actually tied down somehow? Because if you get in an accident, you have a big heavy dog in the back seat or a big suitcase and it's not tied down, it's coming flying up to the front seat and going to seriously hurt somebody. Now, changing or stopping an object's momentum requires a force acting over a period of time. If the momentum changes instantly, as in a car crash, the force is very, very great. If the momentum can be changed over a period of time, even a fraction of a second, much less force needs to be applied with less damage or injury. Now, in a head-on collision, if a passenger flies into the dashboard of a car, their momentum is instantly stopped and serious injury is often a result. If the passenger is restrained by a seat belt, their momentum is reduced more gradually by a constant and smaller force of the belt acting over a longer period of time. Now, seat belts can reduce the impact of pass of a passenger or occupant in a vehicle to one-fifth of the, the impact suffered by the body of the car. And that's quite a bit, especially if you're going at higher speeds. Now seat belts and airbags can prevent death in about half of these accidents. And if you know, if you know this and are still not wearing a seat belt, you may need to ask yourself, why are you not? Now imagine running as fast as you can into a wall. Now you'd most likely be ex expect to get pretty, to be injured pretty well. 
So you run as fast as you can, you don't put your arms out and you just run straight into a wall. You think you're going to hurt yourself. Now, do you think you could stop yourself if the wall suddenly softened up when you were two feet away from it? Maybe, you know, a little bit probably, which definitely reduce your, the chance of you getting hurt. And this is exactly the situation you face when the front of your car hits something at about 20 miles an hour. The car stops in the first tenth of a second, but you keep accelerating at the same rate you were going in the car until something stops you. And this could be the steering wheel, the dashboard, or even the windshield if you are not wearing your seatbelt. At 15 miles an hour, you would seriously hurt yourself and anyone in the car. But at 30 miles an hour, when you crash, it would be four times as bad as if you, you would at 15 miles an hour. Or imagine the impact you would endure from falling three stories. I mean, that's that, there's a lot of force behind you. Now, this link here is linked on your topic homepage, and I want you to go to it after you're done watching these notes here. And it's it's labeled "Why I Wear a Seatbelt," and it's you know it's pretty informative, and it shows an accident and the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Now, the purpose of an airbag is to help the passenger in the car reduce their speed in the collision without getting injured. Now, objects in a car have mass, speed, and direction. If the object, such as a person, is not secure in the car, they will continue moving at the same direction forward with the same speed, so the speed the car was going, when the car abruptly stops until the force acts on them. Now, every object has momentum. Momentum is a product of a passenger's mass and velocity, and this you've previously learned in other lessons. Now, in order to stop the passenger's momentum, they have to be acted on by a force. In some situations, a passenger hits into the dashboard or windshield, which acts as a force stopping them, but injuring them at the same time. Now, an airbag provides a force over time, and this is known as an impulse. The more time the force has to act on the passenger to slow them down, the less damage caused to the passenger. Now you can really see the importance here, so seatbelts and airbags, they're both acting to slow the force down, therefore increasingly increasing your chances of not being hurt. So is it ne still necessary to wear a seatbelt even though all automobiles must be equipped with an airbag because of, because of a few reasons? Now the crash sensors in, in vehicles do not signal for an airbag to inflate unless the vehicle is moving at least 6 kilometers an hour. Now, damage can still occur to a passenger if the collision is of a lower speed. This is where the seatbelt plays an important role in stopping you. Now, the airbag located in the steering wheel does not help the passenger in a collision while another car hits them on, a si on the side. And when the, car, when the car the passenger is in is backing up and collides, the, collides its rear end with another object, the airbag does not help either. Now, with today's technology, other airbags are being introduced into addition to the steer wheel airbag and passenger airbag. And such airbags that are being introduced are side airbags and head airbags. So, I mean, really covering up the full vehicle. And so that's just a few notes today, again, on some another safety feature of vehicles, so airbags specifically, and talking about specifically why we really need to wear seat belts and airbags, how they complement one another, they work well with one another, but one is not a replacement for the other. When in doubt, make sure you buckle up, and your, your airbags definitely do assist you in the long run. But just remember, if you're not wearing a seat belt, and you are in an accident, however fast you're going, that's how fast your body's going. So just imagine... Again, you're driving down Highway 2, you're going 110 kilometers an hour, and you instantly stop, and there's nothing holding you back in your seat, and you go flying with the windshield at 110 kilometers an hour. I mean, you're seriously going to hurt yourself and be very lucky to live through a situation like that. So just some important, again, safety features and something give you something to think about. Thanks a lot.